Hello everyone, and welcome to Breaking Character LARP Reviews. In this new series, we're going to be taking a look at some LARP products and see if they are a perfect fit for your LARP character. Our first entry today is this beautiful latex sword. This comes from Epic Armory, and this is their Corsair Cutlass. Now to put some information out there, I did purchase this for myself. I bought this last year for our pirate game, and let's see if this is the perfect fit for your character. Let's take a look at some of the aesthetics of this first. Uh, clearly, it is a cutlass, and it's probably gonna be more used for your fantasy games. There are some aspects of this that just make it fit more for a fantasy. Uh, you have some, some elements, uh, an oversized uh, handguard here that just make it feel a little bit more like a, a fantastical world than your historical LARPs. So if you are using a high real, realism LARP uh, set in a specific time period in a specific place, this may not be the perfect fit for you, but this would work for pretty much any other fantasy LARP. Again, I bought this for a pirate LARP and this is going to work perfect for that. It does have this raised like kind of notch here, um, which some people may not like. It may have some difficulty getting into a sheath with that here, but I do love the oversized handguard. And this handguard is squishy. Um, I'm always concerned about safety at my games, so I, I don't think I've ever gone to a fight where I've actually hit somebody with the handguard, but if that does occur, it is squishy. In fact, all parts of this latex weapon is made out of that perfect kind of soft foam there. Even the pommel here at the bottom is pretty soft, and the tip obviously is not perfect for stabbing, but most of our LARPs do not allow stabbing. Most of them only allow swings, so if you're intending to stab with this, I would probably not. It's Number one, it's, it's it's not safe, but this sword would not work well for stabbing. There is plenty of foam down here on the striking blade, however, so this should be very safe for you. Let's talk about size. The official listing on this is at 85 centimeters. Well, I am an American, uh, so we are still stuck in the imperial system. So it's about three feet one inches. It's around 37 inches long, uh, which should meet most game's requirements for a long sword. So I highly doubt this would fit for a short sword for most of your games. So if you're looking for something shorter, this definitely has a longer reach to it. Uh, one of the things that I'm concerned about is I'm a tall guy. I'm a big guy and I got big hands. So I'm always concerned about the grip, if there's enough room for your hand in here. Uh, the grip is, oop, you have about five and a half to almost six inches to work with. So for people like me who are kind of on the bigger side, there is plenty of room for mo uh, mobility in there, plenty of room to move around. I'm the kind of guy who likes to hold my sword as close to the blade as possible and have a little bit of extra wiggle room just in case. And I also like to sometimes put my thumb there to kind of just help control a bit. And this piece of foam here is perfect for you to just put your thumb on to help control your movements. And for me, control of your LARP weapon is important. We're not out here trying to hurt each other. This is supposed to be a light, soft touch games that we go to. So this, is, uh, this gives you perfect control over your weapon. I said before that there's plenty of room here in the handguard, but I want to give it a quick test. Not all of us go into combat barehanded. Some of us like to wear gloves. Maybe we're the kind of sneaky thieve types of people, or maybe you do have a, a giant uh, leather glove there. So for most of your gloves, it is going to be still enough room to put your hand inside there. Maybe some of us are concerned about the cold. Yeah, there you go. A lot of us like to LARP in the winter. So what about a leather, a, um, a winter glove, you still have plenty of room to reach in and out of there. That's not going to be a concern. Now, I don't have a metal gauntlet. I know some people do like to go real steel and wear real plate armor or have real metal gauntlets. I don't have something like that, but I do have relatives ugh, who play a lot of hockey. So this is a hockey glove, and this is going to be the most extreme case of, uh, of holding this. And yeah, maybe, maybe that might be a little bit too much. So if you wear a leather glove or you wear any other kind of cloth glove for the winter, there is plenty of room here for you. Um, but again, I do not own a real steel metal gauntlet. You might have some difficulties in there. But it, I don't know if this would really fit with a knight type character. That really wouldn't work here for you anyways. This is more like a finesse kind of work, a, uh, a gentleman's weapon rather than brute strength on the battlefield. 
We like to watch a lot of cooking shows in my house, and one of the phrases they use is mouthfeel, how something feels like in your mouth as you're eating something. So I'm gonna steal that term and call it like hand feel. So how does it feel in your hands? And this feels great. It's light enough that you're not feeling front heavy. I know a lot of swords sometimes that we get, they feel front heavy. And that's not really a concern for most people, but if you're in the heat of the action and you're taking a swing, that little bit of extra weight there might carry forward and deliver a stronger hit to your opponent than what you're really looking for. This is light enough that that's not going to happen. It's pretty well balanced. The grip here is this kind of leather material, and that feels really good around your bare hand. I don't foresee myself dropping this or slipping out of my hand. It feels pretty good there. My only concern would be storage of this. I bought this sheath earlier in the year and I was hoping that my cutlass would fit into it, but this part of the blade here, it's a bit of a chonky boy, so it doesn't fit very well in there. It's kind of hard to get it in and out. And again, I'm always looking for war practical things. How's it gonna work whenever there's a goblin coming at me? So if you have a pre-existing sheath, I would be concerned about this. When I purchased this uh, cutlass, I did purchase a baldric with it. And this baldric that I own does fit there absolutely perfectly. So I would keep that in mind if you're looking to purchase this Corsair Cutlass. Um, it might not fit into some of your other sheaths that you own. And again, no one wants to walk around with a LARP holding their sword the whole time. So storage options might be a concern with this bump, just how thick it is up front. But again, I purchased this sword because I liked that. I like this aesthetic to it. So you might have to find a solution for it, but you're making that sacrifice for that aesthetic, for that genre fantasy slashing aesthetic. Final thoughts on the Epic Armory Corsair Cutlass. Uh, again, I actually did a lot of research before buying this. I looked at a bunch of other cutlasses, and I don't buy a lot of latex weapons, so when I buy one, I'm gonna put a lot of investment and time into it, into that thought. Um, just like any other latex weapon, if this is your first latex weapon, you might want to consider the care that it takes with one of these. I did buy this and used it at a couple events, so I, I did start to damage the sheen slightly for it. But that's just part of owning a latex weapon. This isn't like owning a boffer sword, a PVC pipe with a... Um, with pole noodle around it that you can easily replace with duct tape. You will need some uh, special equipment in order to preserve and protect this throughout its wear and tear. Uh, but these Epic Armory weapons, I, I have a few more of these from this company and they hold up really well, especially I got one that I've been beating around for a couple years and it's still, still kicking. So the quality of these is fantastic. You definitely get what you pay for for this. Um, and it's really a question of your aesthetic. The aesthetic of this is a fantasy pirate slashing light armored character. And if that's something that you play, this would be perfect for you. So I would highly recommend this weapon for you, this latex weapon for those kind of, stop it and keep hitting the candle. <laughs> I would definitely recommend this weapon for you if that's the kind of character that you're looking for. A rogue, a gentleman LARPer, this is for you. We are Breaking Character LARP. This is Breaking Character LARP Reviews. Thank you very much for watching. Let me get this out of the way so we can have our credits running over here. If you haven't by now, please hit subscribe. It definitely helps our channel to grow. Leave a like down there and also leave a comment because we love to hear from our audience. I love interacting with the people who watch our stuff. So if you've got a story about your favorite LARP sword or maybe you do own this LARP sword, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. While you're also here, you can also check out some of the other videos that we've worked on. We do other reviews and other how-to videos. And you can also check out our, some behind-the-scenes things over here with our Facebook and our Instagram. We post there pretty regularly. And uh, I have been told that I have a Twitter account, so you can check that out down here as well. I will try to tweet more often. We love making these videos, and I hope you guys really enjoy watching them. So we, see, we will see you guys out there at the next LARP.